oh, the heavenly tea about heavenly things and the heavenly way of living because we need to turn this world into something that we want to get up to in the morning. How do we do that? It's joy, isn't it? Joy is always the missing factor. And when you are struggling, you are afraid, you are oppressed, suppressed, whatever, lost, confused, you do not have joy. Joy is quite high up there, beyond the, <laughs> beyond the screen of most of our lives. We have those little moments, children laugh and smile. We jump into them sometimes, but I don't know about you, but I'm seeing more meanness coming through the children. They want to explore mean. What? Children are innocent and free and clean, and yet they're wanting to explore mean when they're little. So I don't disallow that, but I allow them to move through it to understand what it feels like because joy is a transformative thing. Mean is entrapment. Struggles, endless bully struggles being mean. That's what we have in the world, that authoritative structure, the old systems, hierarchical structure. We know what we're escaping just about now. It's the red pill, blue pill version of life you've chosen. You've chosen not to have certain things put into your body. You've chosen to now open up to your mind to see that television, media, the news, music, film, are all completely influenced and used as a tool to make you think and act a certain way. Now, what do we not see? <laughs> That's what we're looking at. The beauty of the family. There are some films maybe made, movies made in the 60s and 70s, maybe a couple in the 80s, which celebrated that. Just think back to your lassies, if you're that old. But there are now lots of films talking about love, relationships, but it's actually mostly about sexual attraction, manipulation, codependency. The actual blossoming of love, which comes from trust, which comes from seeing the other person, fully seeing who they are and saying, yeah, I'm willing to stand by you and hold you. And yeah, you're not perfect. You don't always listen to your inner being. You certainly don't always talk to me about your decisions. But I see that you are at least on a daily basis going within to guide yourself from spirit, from source. Now that's a good kind of human you want to hang out with, isn't it? Someone who wants to be led by the beautiful qualities of the universe, the love, the joy, the peace, the harmony, the cooperation, the excitement, the innovation, the creativity, the empowerment. Just a few to mention. Today, families, that's what I'm gonna talk about. Now, when I had my family, I was 19. I wanted children. I never saw a problem about children. I only saw an opportunity, a delight, a beauty. And I had slept with <laughs> the man I was marrying, age still 17 is when I had my first sexual encounter, and that was with him. And I was programmed that you get married to the person you have sex with. So everything in me was saying, you must get married to him. So we got married when I was 19. And then I was pregnant with my beautiful son, the end of my 20th year. And he was born when I was 21. And I had my two other beautiful children, two and a half years, roughly-ish, after that, incrementally. So I had all my three beautiful children by the age of 27, which is a lovely time to bring birth into <laughs> to have birth with your female body because you're very supple, flexible, healthy, fit, very easy to repair. So I have a fabulous figure now, age 52 and a half. Right, that's my age. <laughs> Wrong man, though. <laughs> I didn't have the information to choose the harmony. But what I did anyway, we would travel on the train. We didn't have a car. We were very poor. And we would be spoken to as though we were the holy family. It was quite extraordinary because these children were happy and sweet because I loved them. And their father didn't really know what to do. He didn't have a good connection to his source. And as soon as we went back into Germany, it was diminished and diminished. And his fear took over. And then his low level of consciousness meant that he was then thoroughly entity taken over finally. But... He kind of went along with me for a while and we would be traveling and there were these three exquisitely beautiful children. Yes, happy, healthy, 
barely went to a doctor ever. Um, we were living with homeopathy and bath flower remedies, natural picked from the hedgerow, always organic food. You know, I was the Ur mother, the incredibly natural mother. I would make a lot of their clothes, knit them, sew them. The grandma made things that I drew the pattern for. You know, I'd buy the beautiful wool and she'd make it. Very, very natural. Their toys, all natural materials, apart from the Legos. <laughs> Lego. Got to have Lego, I think. Um, but with, they had this incredible existence until I just got exhausted because I wasn't getting anything from my man. And I was drained down. And my life path, you could say it was my ambition, was saying, yes, do the PhD that you were offered to do. So while I had my babies, I was finishing my first de my degree, five years, it was a degree, BA, Honours, Landscape Architecture, with my first son. And then for my other two children, I was doing my PhD. And it was good I did it because it led to all the other things I have done since. But it was a lot to do, to be the mama to be the wife to someone who didn't know what he was doing, floundering around the place, wouldn't really hold a job down, didn't really know what to do at home. So I was exhausting my energy. And finally that broke and I said enough. And that then the divorce happened. And then we went into full on chaos blasting. The reason I bring this up, the family. Despite the imbalance, I managed to give those children pure love in the first early years of their life. Then they had turmoil. Yep, they did. And then they were captured into an environment which was very much about control, domination, bullying, hierarchy, um, artificial. Even though compared to some artificial lives, it was still fairly natural. They had quite a lot of things outside that they did. But compared to where they'd been with me, they were very much more divorced from their spirit. And you could see that in passport photos, happy, bright, cheerful, completely shut down. So that's a good background to have here yeah. because I know in my heart that families are supposed to flourish and prosper. This planet is a beautiful place if we can have true ownership, if we're not terrified of paying our, paying our property bills, if we're not terrified of can we pay for the food for our children for this week. Can we afford to keep a pet because we can't afford for the meat for this animal? Whatever. Terrors, fears. Yet this planet is so very rich. And you've heard the stories of being able to pack everybody into Alaska. Imagine that. And they would still have space, more than a little bit of space, in just that one territory of the United States. The rest of the planet would be empty. That's how much we have. It is just that, as we know, it is highly manipulated, but we are creating, we are creators. So first we need the woman to be sovereign. That means every day linked into who she is, her full source, call her full being into her presence, like me. Then you need the man to be like that, the power. Now, men have been used to different kinds of power and they've slipped into this Let's call it the patriarchal structure, which actually is the matrix. And it's put them at the top of the tree. Oh, and it's very hard for them to leave that place. It's an artificial place because what happens to those men? That's the system that makes them have their heart attacks at between 50 and 65. That's the typical thing. The ambitious man, you see it so much. It's a compromised masculinity. It is something that has had to deny the heart, the feelings, the emotions, deny the messages from the soul. It has been taught to deny the messages from the soul. Intuition, okay. internal guidance, okay. listening to the feminine. So, and now we've got the opposite, the new agenda, which is to completely flatten the men into sort of weird so-called feminized. They're not feminine at all. They're some kind of weak something, I don't know what very mixed up and we've got to get them clean and to do that every man needs to go into himself and be with his creator source energy god and do that all the time all the time every day souling what do i do now what do i do now what do i do now inner being
God, God within me. When you have that, the woman in that state, and the man in that state, then, hey, let's get together. Let's have babies. Because from that place of a pure human being again, he knows what he's doing. She's no, she knows what she's doing. It's not necessarily a will-dominated thing. It is a trust-dominated thing. The trust of the life, the interchange of these two in their happiness, their joy, their satisfaction, their delight, their discovery, their innovation, their creativity. And yes, along comes a child and another and another. And you have an environment meshed together from these two exceptional beings, being who they are each with completely different skills, complementary. And that environment that is shaped for those children is extraordinary. Now, in the olden days, <laughs> think back to the 50s, okay, in this patriarchally dominated system, which was imbalanced, the matrix used by, let's just say, the Kabbalah, Kazarian Mafia, Mafia, the Nephilim, whatever you want to call it, for control, for dominion. They made this hierarchical saviour, the boss. And somehow he was allowed to boss around the children and tell them what they had to do and what not to do. Now, it's really great to have a figure who can say, stop, the line ends here. You will, just for a moment, listen to me. That's useful. Yup. Especially when you're a 14-year-old boy at your hand shouting at you. You would sometimes need that. But the true relationship of a father to a child, a mother to a child, is listening. It's watching, listening. And that's what I teach when I teach adults to work with children, either at home, homeschool learning, or when they want to set up an alternative school, an alternative learning environment, or they just want to go in as a more fully awakened teacher to where they usually teach. It's all about listening. And you do that by watching, by feeling, and by hearing. And you compare notes to what you've seen with other children, perhaps sometimes, with that child in different situations. And in this, you gather, you learn, you create, and you provide for them. The parents are there to provide, not everything, but an experimental arena, a safe haven where experiments can be conducted, social experiments, physical experiments, mental experiments, emotional experiments, all need to be experimented. The child needs to grow from a small little being to a full adult. And they only do that if it's safe. If you are judging them, telling them what to do, or being manipulated by them, that child cannot grow properly. They need to have honesty and clarity, support and love. When they have that, they become that very beautiful tree that grows in that environment, in that garden. And they can spread out so that when they enter and they test their metal with the rest of the world, the rest of the world might not be as clear and loving and true as their family, but the child can feel that. They can judge, ah, something a little off here. Doesn't feel like what I know from home where, where love and truth and honesty was was at the core of things. And so you give them that beautiful background and they can go into the world and hold their strength and be who they are and be this extraordinary channel for new information through from their being, powered by source energy, by love, by divine, by the God of all. That's what we want. That's the, that's the Eden thing. Us walking hand in hand with the spirit that created everything. How do we do that? So I have spent a lot of time this last year and a half, and prior to that, imagining, envisaging, feeling, creating the state I want to be in, my feminine being. I am a female, I am a woman, and that gives me various ways of being. And I've been cultivating the fullness of that the full intelligence of that. And, and that ranges from a finely tuned aware intellect to a highly sensual body, 
all of this, this is what we have. We have a spirit which goes into the mind and we have all the way down to the fingertips. We want everything to be alive. And as I have been tuning that, shaping that through my emotions, through all of my investigations, I've been doing it before with all my writing and songwriting, my teaching. I am drawing to me the essence of that in my man. The man for me is someone with integrity, someone who loves truth, recognizes it, is not harsh with it, sees it, protects it, stands for it, stands for virtue, stands for purity, will protect purity, will protect innocence. Yes, that's a man, isn't it? A man who is aware enough of his link, his divine, that he can see what is going on around him. Because remember, this hierarchical structure of the matrix has conditioned the man into charging full ahead. Ambition. Cut through, make the change. And they have always forfeited a limb, not a visible limb, the limb of their emotion. And they have denied themselves true love, true honouring, true sharing, the ability to listen. All of those feminine aspects, that's why they've denied themselves true love with their woman. And all these women, all these women seeing tantalising glimpses of a good man, then being disappointed as they're captured by their ambition and their drive and their force. Because they have ceased to listen to the wisdom of the divine coming through them, coming through their partner, coming through their wife, their, their beloved. It's sad for the women, and that's why they're so angry and so mean, you know, because they know they're there to be seen and loved and valued in this world that hasn't. It is a kind of a worship that should be expected as we shift. We are not yet into our new earth. We are still dominated by this pattern which shut down all the feminine. It shut down all the emotion, all the love, all the truth, all the feeling. All of that was shut. The, these jabs were designed to shut that down. The special pieces of DNA in your sequence, <laughs> in your chromosomes, they were designed to shut down certain strand sections of your DNA so that your source access was limited. That's what the whole matrix does. So we need the healed woman, because otherwise she gets this unhealed man and she becomes bitter and mean and nasty and manipulate. Something I refuse to be. Because these women don't know in this matrix system that they can clean themselves at will through actively connecting into this divine field of God, source, energy, what do you want to call it? The stuff that made us all. We can clear anything if we command it, if we ask of it, if we insist upon it, if that is our intention. In the same way, the man can reorientate and say, okay, I see this driving force of ambition is getting me somewhere, but actually it's hitting me back again. And actually I'm using all my power for that. Why am I feeling ill and suffocated? And it's just not working like I want to. Because you're working with a system that is broken now. It has bits of sticking control power holding onto us. But the true power is in this spiritual force. That's why this thing, we keep calling it the ascension. Transition into something, into new earth. That is where the flow of force is. Yes, it's now a force, energy, power. And when the man can align to that, he can relax a little. He stops fighting like a madman. His body becomes more responsive. Responsive. His spirit is able to talk to him or he's able to hear through his emotions more. He's be able to see. Ah! So we're at this stage right now on this earth that this is happening, the woman is realizing, oh my God, I can clear anything. All these horrible programs I had since my childhood, maybe previous lives, I can clear them. Get back to my innocent, true, beautiful, feminine essence, power. And the man is starting to see, oh my God, it's all crumbling. Uh, oh, there's this, there's God. 
ooh, let's align with that. Let's see where that goes. If every decision I make is from that, ooh, I'm changing the way I make my decisions. Interesting. Oh, look at that beautiful woman. There is, this is where we are. We need to be here. <laughs> We've had families built from all kinds of crumbly brokenness, highly dysfunctional, loads of divorces, lots of unhappy, lots of <clears throat> holding onto people because of power and money. Women going to men because of power and money. Men going to women because of all the nurturing they can give them. Completely out of balance. When we get to these clear, pure beings again. Oh, we need to have some children. Because the world is sort of, oh my goodness, there's a lot of sick children, aren't there? 22% increase in deaths in children from 0 to 14 in the UK alone. What do you think that's about? It's about these. And it's about... The codes in that messenger mRNA, that's what it is, messenger RNA, which are making the body sick, these coughs that children have had for months. Where is that going? It's not good. I don't like seeing sick children. And for a few days of the year, they're getting sunshine. Thank God at the moment. Wow, the sunshine will heal a lot. But there is a worrying trend. Population is, is going down. But we need to now start to rethink our families. It shouldn't be that the woman is at the head of the family or the man. No, equal, beautiful beings, each with their territory, interweaving something glorious. Now, when I think for myself, a family, I think of the land, integrating streams, animals, fields, gardens, flowers, vegetables, fruits experiences, rocks, things to climb on trees, people in it celebrating the joy, all of this digging in the earth, us integrated. Yeah, it should be so basic, but of course it's not because we've got taxes and money and mortgages and debts and but, 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 government ordinances. And so we've been blocked from just being natural, beautiful human beings. But we're moving because more and more of us are saying, no, 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 this isn't, this isn't what life is. And how do we keep life moving into the direction we have to hold a vision? Every day, who am I? What do I want to be? Where am I? Ah. Who is he? Who is my love? Who is my beloved? And I found myself looking where he is right now. That's been tricky. <laughs> Hasn't always been a good sight. Mostly I've just had love and compassion pouring through me. Sometimes it's getting a little tricky to get that. <laughs> and so I actually have to do something else. I have to do some spiritual bypassing. I have to say, okay, right. Perhaps that is the current state of where he is. But what I'm going to focus on, on is the man the beautiful man, the love between that man and me, honouring, love, respect, delight, nurturing, fun, sexuality, sensuality, discovery, innovation, discovery of place as well as person, mind, emotion, spirit, and adventure. My job is not to look at something that's possibly going wrong. I have to hold this field. And for many years, I remember thinking, I, 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 I don't know what this man should be like. Because I was looking around me thinking, you know, don't really have the models in my family, in my friends, uh, the couple. The kind of models that I found in people in the world were very nice men. They were nice, they were kind, they were sweet and gentle. They didn't have power. And I'm a Sagittarian, I am fire. I want power in my man. I want it for the bedroom, yup. I want it for the way he holds himself and speaks to people in the world. I want him to have a sense of love for self, self-esteem, not a kind of blown up ego, no. Ah, oh, I am a human being. I am here fulfilling my purpose. And then I found my man and I was delighted. And I saw that. And I was excited. And I 
focused all of that latent energy into him every day after. And then things went a bit uh, wonky because he had so many influences, old stuff he hadn't yet sorted out. Other entities pulling all kinds of people, pulling, bashing. And I wasn't seeing nice stuff anymore. I was seeing awkward stuff. Still loving him. Because it was still better than some of the templates I'd been looking at. My heart still went, oh my God, it's him. Rush, excitement. And now I'm at this place where it's often this. The female has managed to find her place first. And then the man kind of catches up a little bit, spiritually. Because that's how we're made. We're more open because we receive the babies. Remember, we are the creation tools. Yup, they're making a lot of sperm every day. But we take that little half something, add it to our little half something, and then we grow it in our bodies. And then we, oh my God, somehow let that out and then nurture that child. <laughs> so it's obvious that we're going to be often a little bit faster in that spiritual receptivity. So it's my job now, almost, almost divorced from him, almost separate from him to just hold this template of the man, me in love with the man, ah, oh, with our family, with a child or two, in harmony with my adult children who are all old enough to have their old children now, and my eldest son has two beautiful children, in harmony with them, yes, in a field of expanding love, in harmony with all the friends and people around us that we choose because we do feel that, resonance with them. That's my job, hold that field, hold it. And it's not just about the two humans and maybe their lovely progeny offspring. It's about the field that makes the home. When people come to a home like that, oh boy, that is a resonance structure. It hits people's minds. It is so new. Can you believe it? It is a truly happy home of truly happy humans. And children is such a precious, that is the precious treasure on this planet, I promise you. Money can't buy it. No money. Billions, trillions couldn't buy that. It is the most precious thing. For people to come to that home, oh, wow, that touches hearts. For that home to be a place that is actively created, that people can come and visit for inspiration, for being that. That's exciting. So this is a vision I hold. I've known I've been about children and homes. All my life I've known that. And everything I've explored from landscape architecture, architecture, children's educational structures, the performing arts in all kinds of ways, creating and delivering, and every detail of working with children. That's all that whole range, isn't it? of being there as a shiny example of what it is to be human, what it is to be a family, what it is to create and change and shift the dynamic of this earth so that we are patterning something different, something beautiful, truthful, and filled with the spirit of love and God. So I will leave you on that note. Feels nice. My hands are going buzz, buzz, buzz. And I've got a song to write on, to work on. I wrote it last night and I love it. It's going to be my new theme song. So of course, it's called Fall to Earth. I like that. So I've got to work on it because it takes hours, takes days to make a song. Right. See you soon. Bye-bye. I am Dr. Isabel M.A. This is Activating Your Human Potential. Of the Heavenly Team. <laughs>